Um, can you see that yet? There it is. Yeah, that's good enough. How's everybody doing today? I think we're live. Oh, good, we're live. Oh boy, I've been waiting all day. Let me pause that. Get to keel that feedback so it gives me better. And this light is blinding. Just one moment, please. Well, no, huh? Can't see a thing. How's everybody doing today? It's Saturday. Look, I wasn't on last night. I went out to eat. Every now and then, I just got to get out of the house. And, uh, well, it seems a good time as any Friday night. Okay, we're going to look at some uh, coins. Well, let me put these somewhere. I have no place to put these. Uh, I'll just throw them there down. Uh, look, I was just over at Lemonhead Penny's uh, uh, stream. He, I think he's still streaming. Uh, he's going to be the uh, the coin channel of the week. He's got a great channel. He interacts with the people, the, the viewers. Uh, he talks about coins. Um, it's my style. I like it. So he's going to be the uh, coin channel of the week. You'll find his link down below in the uh, description here. Somewhere down there. I hope. I might have screwed it up. So I'll get in there and check. Good day, Ken. Just found a 2017P. WDDO number 17. We can probably expect more double dies uh, for the next couple of years. Uh, 2020 is expected by my math to be... Uh, Probably the biggest year for a while. By then, they should be retooling, and then they'll drop down to low numbers again. There's Beth. How are you? Joe Miller, Chris Hurley, Corey W., Sebastian Garcia, Ant, Logan. Chef has gone. He found the kitchen, I guess. Corey W., whole bunch of us here. Okay, how many people we got? We got a dozen people watching. That's probably plenty enough. Yeah, that'll be fun. Okay, uh, had quite a discussion about tone coins recently. I don't care much for tone coins. Uh, that's still an ongoing uh, discussion over in one of the Facebook groups. And uh, in my last video or two videos ago, somebody left a comment. What, how, what's the best way to clean a coin? And, uh, oh, geez. Oh, God. You're on a topic that is controversial at every level. There's a difference between conservation and cleaning. The two are not the same. One of them will remove crud. And the other one will preserve the value of the coin. If you're going to clean a coin, you can expect all numismatic value to be destroyed. All right. Uh, I could get into conservation, but really what you need, if you're going to conserve a coin, you need a four-year degree at a leading college. Uh, I call up uh, a museum here, and I said, hey, look, I'm talking to people online, and they said the best way to clean uh, coins is, you know, ketchup. I'm wondering what brand you would recommend. They hung up on them. They hung up on me. I couldn't believe it. There we go. But you get a lot of it. Um, the young people in particular try all sorts of things. And sometimes it's it's sort of effective or seems effective in, in cleaning the coins, getting the crud off the coins. Uh, but you get a lot of answers. If you, if you just go on one of these Facebook groups and say, what's the best way to clean a coin? They'll tell you Coca-Cola. They'll tell you um, geez, lemon juice, right? Soaking in ketchup. Uh, there's a hundred different ways uh, to screw up a coin, and they hit 99 of them. Every now and then they miss one. Back when I was uh, 12, maybe 11, where's that one I had? I got one right here. I know it. I've got a perfect. Okay, here's a 1944. Me and a couple other kids, you know, we're getting around. We got our wheat pennies out. You know, it's 1980, 1979. We realized, hey, you know, you can take your eraser and you can clean that coin just by rubbing the penny with an eraser and we took an afternoon we all got our wheat pennies together and we we erased the grime yeah great you can see dates let's see what this looks like up close and personal when you do it um what is it? What's, there it is let me move that that's a that's another project I had a bunch of coins all laid out over here on the top of this uh, uh, this little bureau kind of thing, and the cat decided he'd get a, he had to get up there and take a nap. Thanks, cat. So he got up there and napped every one of them things off. Now rubber, this is a rubber. It's got abrasives in there, that tip of the pencil. So what's going to happen is that uh, you're not so much removing grime; you're polishing that metal. 
is what's happening here. And you're, you're destroying the, any natural luster that is remaining. Uh, this is not a satisfactory method of cleaning coins. I get a lot of scratches and hairlines. Let's get way in on that. Maybe we can really see what's going on. Well, we screwed up every single coin we had. Uh, no, I'm not going to be able to see that. How can I show this well? Let's go back to the other one. Home. Maybe it'll show up over here. The right side of the coin where I hit it with the, uh, the eraser is... Uh, it's been buffed, in effect. It's uh, dull of luster. It is. It does have a lot of crud removed. Well, that's good, but this coin is, you know, nothing. This doesn't even go in my bag over here. I'm going to send that back to the bank. There we go. Uh, this is not an effective method. It seems okay when you're 12, but uh, you really haven't had a lot of time involved in the hobby to make a determination of what's an effective way to clean a coin. Let me catch up on chat. No, olive oil. Rather, it leaves a residue. Oh, olive oils. I do not subscribe to olive oil. See, cat hair cleans coins. I, it, I'll be cleaning them indirectly. It gets them onto the floor, and then I clean them up off the floor. That's how cat hair cleans coins. Okay, there are mechanical methods, and there are uh, chemical methods. All right, mechanical would be something like the eraser, where you mechanically remove the uh, the debris, right? There's chemical methods. Um, you got GNP mentioning olive oil. JC Will mentioning olive oil. Well, olive oil is a complex compound. It's an organic compound. That's not a single molecule in there. You've got, you know, 20, 50, 100 different molecules in there. Same kind of thing as that little oil on your finger. And I had a penny here. That's not it. That's over here. There we go. Uh, the ideal people are looking for is they would like to see all their coins look so shiny and new. Uh, just like this here proof. Distilled water. Water is the worst enemy of them all. For all kinds of reasons. There we go. Now this guy has a fingerprint. So I wanted to talk about how do you get a fingerprint off a coin? Where did it go? I'm going to see it just up here. No, it's not my fingerprint. I came across it. There it is, alternating bands of bright and dull. Now your fingerprint, the oils in there, they're organic compounds, just like the olive oil. And if you get to it fast enough, and we're talking, you know, hours, uh, you have a chance of removing that, but just a chance. You got a greater chance that this, uh, these compounds, these organic acids have already etched that sur the surface of that coin, and it is forever uh, fingerprinted. And do you ever get it off? No. I did an article about how to clean coins. And really the best way that I recommend is, uh, geez, Dawn in a Brillo pad. Where's the Dawn? Here we go. Dawn, soap and water. Scrub it, right? Because you're going to ruin the value anyway. I'd rather see you, you know, do it safely. Uh, people recommend ketchup. Ketchup? Really? Do you think the Smithsonian uses ketchup? No. Nope. Okay, how about uh, copper cleaner? Eh, it's good for, say, a fancy copper bowl. I use this in the kitchen. It's a real nice copper bowl. It helps your eggs whip up. How would you clean that? I use Dawn and a scrub pad. Just scrub it right out. Seriously, you're going to use... I don't know, spray and wash. I got an, I got a couple more props here. I love this. Oh, we got we got that stuff you clean the toilet out with. You know, the old comet. That's an abrasive. So that's a that's a chemical and mechanical uh, type of thing where you have oh what have they got in there? Pumice, ground pumice, and it scrapes off the, the surface like a Brillo pad. And how about soft scrub? Let's actually practice with some of these. Oh, where'd my nasty rag go? I got a nasty towel. I did not wash my hands for this experiment. All right, we're going to go over here. I'm going to make a mess. I'm going to get my props out of the way. Which I should have done before. And I got to clean the desk anyway, right? Because we got all this stuff here. Let's play with some soft scrub. Hot water and dawn. Oh, man. Let's mix that with some bleach. 
All right. What do we got here? If you're not trained in conservation, whoa! Really, you're not going to be doing the coins any favors. And you're not going to learn what conservation is from a one hour video, from two sentences and a Facebook response. Oh, look at what that does to my desk. Hell yeah. Okay, let's put that over there. You do need an entire course. You've got a lot to consider here. You have the composition of the device you wish to clean or unscrew. All right? You've got the composition of the material you're going to use to clean it. You have the methods involved. Are the methods going to improve, help, or screw up that coin? Now, in this case, we're going to screw it up. This is soft scrub. You use it to clean your your desk, your sinks, you know, your bathroom. It doesn't work on desk, I guess. I don't know what that is. I think it's ink. Huh. Well, anyway, we got it on the coin. All right, we're going to make sure we cover both sides real good. Let's rub that in. There we go. We'll give it a second here and just kind of polish both sides real good. i probably clean the camera. This really should be a lab class. There we go. We didn't have a before shot, so we were not going to tell if it's been cleaned or not. There we go. Let's get in there some more. That's really... Let's get all that and just scrub a dub dub. Here we go. This how you clean a coin? Going to make it shiny? Going to make it new? You're not. There we go. We're getting some, some bust. Let's get that out of there. Ah, and then we wipe it off, right? Easy peasy. Let it sit for a half a day and rinse it off. What do you think of acetone? Stand by. Okay, here's what we just did to this guy. Uh, yeah, we scrubbed off some stuff, but uh, the uh, abrasives in there uh, have, well, they scuffed the surface of the coin. It's no longer the original natural tone. Let's put that under the close-up here. Oh, there it is. Okay, there you go. That's neat because it still didn't work in getting off these, uh, oh, these green spots. Oh, well, the green spots aren't something that's dirty. That's that's corrosion. That's verdigris where the uh, copper is uh, oxidized. Okay, that one's kind of shot out. Yeah, didn't do a thing on the corrosion spots. Took off some grime, right? Took it down to bare copper. And you got that. Okay, we can't see that. We still can't see that. Yeah, it's a penny, but now it's just a, you know, a wheat that's been cleaned. Again, that one goes in circulation. Because it's not worth the three cents that I have over there. All right, you want to try ketchup? Uh, really, it's not going to do a darn thing. Ketchup, lemon juice, these are acidic compounds. And that, that acid will do a great deal of damage to copper. Right? Copper is a reactive metal. And uh, what would Verticare do? Uh, I don't know. I don't use Verticare. I use, uh, you, know, you know, Scrub Brush and Dawn. Uh, I don't clean these things, really. You can tell when they've been cleaned. I've got one here that was cleaned. It came in. That's it. Okay, let me get a different card here. See, that one's contaminated. You can tell when a coin has been cleaned. There we go. If we can see it, here we go. This one was cleaned long, long, long ago. I'd give it 30 years, judging by the amount of toning that has reoccurred. Uh, you scrub a coin down to, to a beautiful, shiny thing, uh, and then let it age again, and it will form a new patina. It will form a new surface. And pick up the tone, starting from, its, uh, well, from wherever it ended up. This one's kind of screwed up. Let's have a look over here. I'm going to need... There it is my change bucket <coughs> and let's have a look a lot of times these retoned coins will pick up a uh, an iridescence how the hell am i going to make this work get in there mm. with the toning the new toning it's going to be different from the old toning 
Oh, this is just going to upset me terribly. But you're going to have different colors in there, and they're almost going to be neon, some of them. So you can tell if a coin has been cleaned. Another big indicator is you get a uh, one spot of the coin which is very, very shiny. Give me... Where's that? Give me that. Sometimes if I go to light, then dark, it'll refocus itself. And sometimes it gets thrown out in the lawn. Come on. You don't want to go out in the lawn, do you? You'll rust. You have to talk to these things just right. There we go. That's a 1910 that was cleaned many years ago. Uh, it's actually a 1910S. Now, you got two things here that, that tell me that this coin has been cleaned. One is the, uh, the tone of this has changed. It doesn't have the cartwheel finish, but it does have some luster, but it's not, it's not the cartwheel luster. Uh, next are the colors in there that you can't see on this camera. Um, are iridescent. They almost glow in the dark. They're, they're bright. They're fluorescent. They're green and blue and red. Every color of the rainbow. But if you have a contaminant, uh, something on the coin, say, well, I don't want to put it in, the, in there yet, uh, some grime. I'll show you this in a second. And it comes off. Over here, you'll see this bright spot. right? Because if your coin is covered with something, some goo, some debris, some doo-doo, and I'll show you that right now. Here we go. Such as this one, right? What is that? Ah, that's going to come off. Uh, that debris is protecting what's underneath to some degree. All right. Uh, you've got normal exposure to the elements, which much of this coin over here is going to you know, show the same sort of same sort of toning. From, but where it's been covered, well, you have a protected spot. It's not exposed to the elements. It, it's exposed to whatever that grime is. And you can get a different reaction. It can stay shiny, can stay clean, uh, and then fall off all in one piece. Let's get back over here, which is what this one is. Um, so we've got these bright spots. That's a good indicator. Now, there's another one I was going to show you here. Okay, it's a... No, that's not it. Where the hell did it go? Yeah, here you go. Here's one with bright spots. Of course, you can't see it. Uh, and it's the same idea, right? If you have a coin that was covered with some contaminant and then that contaminant was removed, you can get dark and light side by side. This one happens to be a woody. It's a real sweet one. But it gives you the same idea uh, with light and dark and high contrast. But you can tell the woodies differently. Okay. Well, do you go and get the stuff off when underneath it, it's going to show you what the, you know, the, uh, it's going to show you a different, uh, different color. Right, this one ain't too bad. Uh, I've got darkness still. We're here where it's exposed. It's still pretty light. Kind of neat. Now what you have here is another form of mechanical uh, cleaning. Right, it's I'm actually shoving the debris out of the way, and I can tap it off. I can actually look at that. Right, but if you're using solvents or cleaners, it needs to be specific to the coin, to the metal that makes the coin, and it has to be specific to the the debris or junk that you want to get off, right? Because if it's not specific to one and the other, uh, you can have a reaction going on where maybe it was, you know, safe to the coin, but once it reacted with the crud on the coin, that new compound, because it mixes, damages the coin. But even so, you can get the crud off, but it's going to show up. Uh, at what point do you say to hell with it? Is it worth cleaning to begin with? Something like this. This I can get this off pretty easily. I got uh, I got doo doo. I have debris on this one, and you can touch that stuff with a toothpick and see if it's going to move easily. This probably dropped in the mud or something, All right? There you go. And I'm giving this just a t just a gentlest touch. I don't pet my cat this softly. What about Tarnex poison? Poison, I tell you. Now, Tarnex also is a, it's a, it's a cleaner. A cleaner is a blend of solvents, abrasives, um, evaporatives. You name it, it's in there. Um, if you must clean the darn things, try the mechanical methods first. Touch it, right? If it doesn't come off, move on to a soft cloth. Now, this is a, this is a cotton cheese cloth. You get them up at Walmart. They're not much. 
But bear in mind, everything you do to the surface of that coin is probably, whoop, there it goes, is probably going to reduce its value. This is a 1999. Yeah, I can probably get away with playing with this one. Okay, I got some stuff up here. Will it remove with a soft cloth? I'm just going to press that and drag it across. Some yes, some no. All right, we can go back and play with the pick. Do more mechanical removal. There you go. Just like shoveling snow or something. And a lot of the stuff will come off. But I'm not going to get in there with a, you know, a chisel or a file. Because you can seriously screw up your coins quickly. How much is it worth? You're going to do this on a $20 coin? A $50 coin? I ain't touching that. And a lot of it does come off. Okay. Wipe that on my shirt. I'm going to tap that off. And give it a soft wipe. Gentle. Gentle is the word here. Now, if you give it more than two or three wipes with a soft cotton cloth, you're polishing that coin. There are times when it makes sense to clean it. You're out there metal detecting. You dig something out from under somebody's porch from 100 years ago, and all you got is a is, is a circle, right? And it's just crap. You can't see what it is. Yeah, okay. It's it's not a coin until you can identify it, right? So at what point is it worthwhile to clean something that's, you know, freaking two centuries old, right? Been underground for a while. It's a Wellington I picked up not too long ago. Um, this one was probably underground for an extended period. Uh, soil, iron, different uh, elements in the soil, all the water, mold, mildew, tends to corrode copper. It's that half cent. And it's copper. It's a lot lighter now than it was. That's a half penny token. Um, there's no conserving this. Once you get to this point with a coin, it's pretty much shot out. I got this because I wanted it. Uh, can I clean this? Well, I'm not going to get it back to looking like that proof scent which I lost. Here you go. That coin will never ever look brand new again. Uh, for all your wants and hopes. There you go. That's a proof. This guy is going to be like this forever. Uh, but he's going to stop getting worse if I don't mess with it. That's the best part. I get to choose that. Now that nickel. Yeah, we get a lot of stuff off of there. Let's try the other side. And I have this, uh, oh, the grayness that was under that, that junk. I want to dress that as well. There is one item that I would use, and I do it very, very rarely. And it's gone. Okay, acetone. Acetone does not interact with copper. It does not interact with nickel. But that does not say that acetone will not interact with whatever the junk is on this coin. And now I've got a different compound, don't I? And that can affect the coin. So what you start with is not necessarily... Oh, let me get some cardboard down here. This is important. Yeah, that's a piece of... That's a, what is this? Oh, that's a card. Okay, this is important. I got to show you this one real quick. Uh, what does acetone do to plastic? Because that's a plastic base. All right. It might not interact with the copper or the nickel, but boy, does it interact with with this. You get these uh, these slabs. This is a bullshit slab. This is a like, superhero slab. I've shown this off a couple of times. There we go. That's a superhero's graded collectibles and everything. This every single thing this guy had. Was AU58. Huh? I got some good things out of them, but there people put stickers on these. There we go. Bring that over here. So I figure, let's screw one up. So you get a little residue of the sticker over on this side. Can acetone take that off? Let's try it. This is kind of neat what happens. Do 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 do. It's not happening. What what? Uh, okay, we'll try something else. Acetone has a bad reaction with plastic. It really frigs it up a lot of times. Okay, let me get another one. Uh, here's a flip. Okay, watch this, right? Nice, clean flip. I'm going to wipe it with acetone. 
That's it. I'm just wiping it round and round and round. And let's see if something happens. It almost does it in front of your face. Yeah, that's pretty much a ruined. I need a black background. There we go. Um, that's kind of shot out now. Yeah, you get a coin in there. Eh, it's not so good. This can screw up some of the plastics that are used in slabs. Uh, here we go. We're starting. Yeah, it takes a little time. That's goner. Well, you can't use acetone to clean plastic. Oh God. This this if this was a PCGS slab, it's done, baby. Uh, you'd have to re-slab it. Okay, let's get back over here and see where acetone is useful and where it isn't. USB scope. Okay, now I've got the acetone poured into a metal, uh, oh, just a bullet, a little ramekin type of deal. I got a toothpick. Now, I'm going to put this onto the coin right now. I've used that toothpick on that plastic. I've got plastic residue on, on, on this, uh, this Q-tip. you got to get another one. Really, I should be changing the acetone that's in here. Because any contaminant is going to be your enemy. Once I put the Q-tip onto this nickel, anything that's on that nickel is now on the tooth on the Q-tip. And if I put that Q-tip back into my reservoir, I have cross-contaminated my, my junk. All that crap is going. It goes into solution and ends up on my next coin. Uh, Geez, that's not really effective on this mechanical, you know, the big gunk, is it? Now, oh, let's try that again with the toothpick. Did that work? Toothpick still picks it right up. Huh. Okay, rule number one. First, do no damage. All right. Then you have an order of things. Try the toothpick first. See if it's soft. If it's soft, you can probably get it off with the toothpick and not have to pull out the cleaners and the solvents and the toothpicks and the q-tips and everything else okay how's it doing for the material underneath all right the gray spots i'm still not getting the hard stuff off over here we got that uh, darker spot not doing anything at all now the best part is it's not really interacting with the coin but if I polish that for, you know, five minutes, ten minutes, I'm going to start to do some damage. Huh, throw that one out. Okay. Another way you can try to do this is take the coin, put it in a plastic bag. We did this the other day. This is a 1909 BDB with a cat hair on it. Cat hairs you do it mechanically, grasp and remove. Now, I had some crap on the bottom, on the sides. And let's see if we can show that. Uh, we stuck it in the freezer. Yeah, the freezer. Now, the plastic bag keeps a condensation from landing on the coin. Uh, this is a real decent 1909 BDB. It's an AU condition. And it had some gunk on it, just like that nickel. Now, I touched it with the, uh, a toothpick. And, geez, what do you know? Some of it came off. We stuck it in the freezer. Another cat here. Kitty, you stay off of the desk. Uh, the freezing and thawing. Uh, copper has a pretty, uh, quite a strong uh, expansion, a thermal expansion coefficient, which means that, you know, for its length, it's going to grow a lot or shrink a lot, depending on the temperature. And if you can get that coin to grow and shrink and grow and shrink a few times, a lot of that debris is going to come off. So, a freezer. Now, that's another mechanical wet method. Let's stick it in there and have a look. We'll grab another toothpick. So this one I don't want to screw up. But we did a, a check, and this is a couple of days ago. Uh, what was it, Thursday stream? We were just goofing off. And you can find that sometimes this stuff right in here is going to come off with a light touch. All right, but what do you have? You still have a dark. You got the regular tone of the coin, and you have bright spots underneath where the debris came off. Let me try to push this piece off. Yeah. See how, see how it soft and moves? And we had some more over here. And it's soft and moves. 
And this, more than anything else, is probably grime from people's fingers. It's chocolate or, oh, God knows what, makeup, crayon, something that was in your pocket, something you would put in your pocket. Everything sticks to my elbows. Um, freezing and thawing doesn't screw up the coin because these coins are going to be, you know, going from Alaska to Puerto Rico. They're going to take the heat change as the temperature change. So they don't do it quite as extremely and quite as fast. But you can do this. Drop it on the floor, then pick it up. Drop it in a plastic bag. All right, seal it. Get all the air out. Place it in the freezer. It's, they're small. They're thin. It's only going to take... 10 minutes. Uh, let that baby get cold. Let me stop, set this down. I'm dropping it. I'm all butterfingers today. I got stuff all over the desk here. Let me try to neaten up. And it can remove that thawing and freezing cycle, doing it repeatedly, can remove a lot of material. And you don't have to do anything besides just, you know, take it out and put it in. Not too bad. Some of these coins, uh, you're never going to clean them. What's the whole point to cleaning? Are you going to get this back to looking like that proof? Here's that proof. Is this the way every coin should look? Matter of fact, this coin's got some problems. There we go. What about this one? This one was burned. I mean burned. This was thrown in a fire and burned black. Is that going to be cleanable? If you could clean it, would it be worth it? Not usually. I find uh, the time it takes uh, and the value of the coin are the key factors here. Anything of good value, I'm not going to try to clean it. Right? Anything that's you know not that value, it's not worth the time to clean it. Uh, it's a common deception. Oh, I can clean that coin. Going to make it you know more valuable? You're not. You can get some of the junk off it. But if you're not using the right stuff, you're probably reducing the value. Well, acetone, I think, is safe. It doesn't screw up the coin. And it can it can give you, well, at least the feeling that you're helping improve the coin. Right? But even so, you have a, a lot of things to consider. Now, I've got the gunk. For whatever this gunk is on that coin is now on this Q-tip. Now, if I stick that Q-tip in there, right? Drip it off, and then go to work on that next coin. The gunk that was on the first one is now in the solution and now going on to this other coin, the burned one. Um, I think I can get away with it because this coin's done anyway. But if you're cross-contaminating, uh, it's an easy one to, to do, right? I mean, every time you switch from one coin to the next, you need to get another Q-tip. Um, this is a five cent coin. No, this is not even a five cent coin. This is a zero cent coin. This one's worth a penny. No amount of cleaning or improving is going to help this coin out. That is burnt up. But here you can see on the edges, yeah, the light and dark where some of the uh, some of the ash and soot and carbon came off. That's what I'm talking about. You can identify this. This guy's been cleaned. At what point is it worth it? Well, if you want it done right, you've got to have it conserved. And for that, you want to have somebody with either decades of experience, um, college degree, they do it for a living, they do it professionally, and you're not going to learn it on, on a video, I can tell you. Some things can be improved. Here's, a, here's, here's another burned one. But it's so darn easy to, to do more damage. And nothing's happening on that one. It has a nickel with some crap on it. I don't know what this is. And is it soft? No, that's on there. What's this going to do? Is it going to help me at all? You think about acetone, it evaporates quickly. Right? Now, in order for that to evaporate, it's going to draw the energy out of the metal to warm up the acetone so it'll evaporate. Watch how fast it goes. That's fast. But when you cool that penny or that nickel, uh, it's the same darn thing as, as the freezer coin. Where'd it go? Here we go. Same darn thing. You've got a cold coin, and now you're going to protect it from the water in the atmosphere that's going to condense on it. 
Because these things, you can try it out, really. You'll learn so much just by trying. Do it with regular coins. What about walnut shell dust? How about uh, 60 grit garnet? What happens as this... Hey, look at it go. As that acetone evaporates, it kills the coin. That coin will get cold. I mean cold. You could put it on your forehead on a hot summer day. And it's really neat. Sometimes you find me on the porch out here. I got like $45 in my head. All right. But you can now now you got to protect the coin from the water in the in the environment. Uh, water is evil. It is a powerful solvent. Okay. Uh, if it lands in water, most organic compounds dissolve. Uh, petrochemicals float. Uh, all sorts of things happen when water gets involved. <sighs> the big issue is that stuff gets gets dissolved in the water, and then later on, that water evaporates and now you're left with that contaminant all over your coin right well that nickel didn't do anything we could try all sorts of things pennies are the most common thing we look at so let's play with those most i don't know what this is it's some kind of just funky i don't know i picked up i went through my change i said i need some examples let's play ain't nothing happening here i get scrub and scrub and scrub let's keep scrubbing Let's see what happens. Soda. Okay. You got Coca-Cola. They say, how about Coca-Cola? Okay. You have the acid that is phosphoric acid. And that, believe me, rapidly uh, combines with copper uh, to, to begin corrosion. It takes a while to, you know, really screw it up. But uh, let's see. What else is in Coca-Cola? Sugar, caramel color, uh, whatever the hell the cola stuff is. It's, again, a complex compound. Ain't a thing happening here. 2015 circulated. I'm not getting anything out of that. What is it, ink? No. I had one I want to show. It's the 1916. Is that the one? It had some, had some goo on it. Let me get a new one. Let's see if I can get this off. See the shine on that? I think that is uh I think that's a sugar. It's uh kind of clear. It could be sugar, it could be glue, but it's some sort of uh it's some sort of contaminant that landed on this. I bet you this will take it off. Okay, now this is a coin worth 50 cents. Let's get some more juice. Oh, perfect. And it took it off. It has totally dissolved. But you're left with this shiny spot. Let me make sure it's all gone. I'll blow it dry. There. Perfect. Here's a contaminant that was on a coin. We just cleaned it using acetone, but we have a bright spot left. Now, what I was saying about that, it's a great way to tell if something uh, was on the coin and came off. You have light and dark. This is a woody example. But this one is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. All that effort. Yeah, you got the coin clean, but now it screams, I've been cleaned. Let's go over here and have a look. If we can see the right side of that. It has a bright spot. If that'll ever focus. Really having trouble there. Uh, I can see it. Maybe it's my imagination. Let's see if we can get in up top and close. Make it dark and brighten it up. One day this camera is going to work and I won't know what to do with myself. There we go. Over at 3 o'clock, right on the edge and on the weed ear, was where that uh, sugary looking compound was. And it's a bright spot. Okay. Is it 50 cents or is it goner? Well, this had a big scratch on it anyway, so I figured, okay, we can make that work. So far, out of all these things that we've treated, we screwed up a slab. We ruined a flip, which is lost here. Yeah. Uh, we haven't been able to actually clean anything effectively using the acetone. All right, let's look at this one. Let's keep trying. Okay, here's that 1963 proof. And we have a fingerprint on it. Oh, God, and plus another spot over there on the left. 
Not sure what that is. How do we get that off? Let's try mechanical first. What was in the superheroes lab? That was a 1915S. Believe it or not. Home. Yeah. And I, I think it was uh, I think it was VF. Well, I kept the I kept the slab because you know, hey, don't, I don't throw anything out. I got a garage, I can always put stuff in. Okay, let's get back to this over here. We got a fingerprint. Can I push it off mechanically? Well, not really. This is just a surface issue. There's no material to push off. You see the uh, the fingerprint here? There's nothing here to get a grip on. Ah, okay. How about we try the wiping it? Will we just wipe it gently? And I mean gently. I have a nickel that half the details are gone. It's a major grease error. Let's see pictures. Put it up on your uh, on your next video. Okay, can I wipe off a fingerprint? Huh. 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 No, that really didn't work. What that spot? Let's flip that out. How come I don't have gloves on? Because I wanted to show you more. How about a fresh fingerprint? Oh, that's fresh. Okay, does that wipe off? Okay, if you get to it fast, you got a chance. All right? But in this proof, check out what we've done with that one wipe. Remember how shiny this was? And now I have all these fine striations. That proof is shot. It is ruined. This is now an impaired proof. There you go. Perfect example right there. This is why the soft cotton cloth is not really a good option. This is what it's going to do to a proof. Yep, it's going to do the same thing to an uncirculated. It's going to do the same thing to a circulated. Let's try this side. I'll go even softer. I just want to be gentle. I don't get all the, I don't get all the dew off of it. Ah. Okay. Freezing, I'm pretty sure, is going to work. Is this going to do me any good? Let's see if I can restore those scratches. Right? And let's see if I can get the rest of this fingerprint off. I'm just going to tap it rather than scrub. Because these proofs are really delicate. They don't want to be messed with. Okay, did it do the fingerprint over here? Kind of. I'd say it, it, it did some help on the fingerprint over there. Over here, uh, those should still be there. Let's see if I can, yeah, I can still, I can still find these, uh, these fine lines where it's been buffed by the cotton. Let's look at the back. Now this fingerprint's been there for a while. All right, it wouldn't wipe off. Let's see what this does. Anything there? Nope. Anything there? Uh, fresh fingerprint, you have a chance of getting it off. All right. You can be hard pressed to get it off of proof. I don't know what that is. Let's see if I can get that off. Mm hmm. This is, I'll go from this angle so we can see more. Now, this is just a cotton Q-tip. You know, you could wipe a baby's butt with a cotton Q-tip. That's not coming off. Anything happening to the coin? Yeah. I've got polish marks coming from below the C over to the M from a soft cotton Q-tip. Proof coins are very unforgiving. All right. There you go. Any contaminants that I had in the acetone appear as streaks on the coin. Anything I contact that coin with is going to show fine polished marks. Yeah, this guy's, this is a ruined coin. Maybe I can just polish it and make it pretty. Let's take this proof coin and polish it with a soft cloth. Let's see what it looked like before. Mm -hmm. Just sent the pics to Ken PV at kenpv.live.com. Okay. I'm not going to open my mail right now. This is that proof. Same darn thing. And I polished it. Uh, 
And all across this coin now, I've got these fine, fine lines. Yeah, it scratched all the hell. So a soft cotton. It smells like Walmart still. Smell that. Here, smell that. Okay. Is there anything you do with a coin with, with a proof? No. This coin is shot. Okay. What about circulators? Anything of value? Uh, we have already seen the problem with the solvents. It will lift stuff up, but then you got to get the solvents off, or the stuff is going to redeposit. Anything you anything you touch that coin with, be it a soft cloth or a Q-tip or a brush. I've screwed up proofs with these. Where'd that proof come? Go back. Come back here. All right. Uh, I try to get little cat hairs off of a coin by brushing it gently with this clean Walmart smelling brush and left scratches on it. Just fine little scratches that you see all kinds of them on this coin now. Whereas earlier, it was pretty good except for this, this darn fingerprint, which is still here. Okay. Well, somebody might like the proof, but it's now an impaired proof. It's not worth much. Just weigh two cents. Look. Let me read these. It's still worth a penny. Yeah, it's still worth that. Some people like to have a proof. It is, you know, it was kind of it was kind of been paired already with the uh, the fingerprint. Uh, have we been able to accomplish any of anything here? We got some junk off a of nickel, and uh, geez, a toothpick did that, right? We tried to get some junk off pennies and haven't really done that. Uh, it was burnt. Where'd that burn up go? Is that it? No. Nope. Wow, that ran off. Must be up here. There we go. The burn, the carb, that thing is, I mean, it's black. Dude, this is in a house fire, I swear it. I got, I went through some rolls and I got a whole bunch of them, about 50 wheats, and they were all black like a hole in the world. Okay, ruined. I kept them. Okay, let's look at the 55. Is anything going to do anything on that? Now, see the shiny spot? That looks to be a contaminant that may come off. Down here, I've got some green. Okay, now we know what that is. That's a bit of corrosion. That's a uh, verdigree. This coin has already seen some sort of water, which has altered the color of it in, in different places. But I got lots of crap around this coin. What can I do with that? Let's try the acetone. Uh, is that going to help any? Let's mess with it just to see. Just like that. Okay, we got some dust off, right? That uh, shiny spot, ready? That is changed. Whatever the shiny stuff was, and I suspect sugar, that's gone, but I have a corrosion spot left underneath. The green, still there. I don't even know if it's a buy. I'm gonna have to get in there and scrape it. Let's get in there. Where is it? Come to me. I get in there, I wanna see what that is. Is that something? It ain't moving, baby. That's there. But we got a lot of, uh, you know, dust off. All right. Got some still stuff here. I don't know. Underground. Maybe it was in a, uh, a fountain. Uh, you get these splotchy ones. I suspect it's, you know, they were in a fountain soaking for a while. Okay. We didn't help that one. What was this one? This one, we got a uh, we got a green spot up here. No, that's, that's something else I think it was. That's right. Let's play with that. Let me know if it changes. And just going slowly with the uh, with the swab. Not a whole lot of grime on here otherwise. Maybe we'll get the uh, get that crud out from the date. So it's got like an outline. A little bit down there in the bottom of the bust. A little bit by the bust. It's just about gone. Look. Nothing on the date really changing. Look at that dark spot up here. Ah. Uh, no. But we did get some of the, of the crap from down below the bust. I'm going to touch that with a, with a pick and see if anything else will move. No. Okay. That one didn't work. How about this one? 
here's a 1953 good looker. I'm going to use a new Q-tip because this one's got some toning marks on there. All right. Uh, it's not consistent with the fingerprint. Let's see if we can get those off. I'm seeing zero change on these. How about over here? And these are probably just uh, whatever there was from the machine uh, feeding the planchets into the mint and the mint coming up in the bag. And anything it was exposed to after that. Maybe uh, some moisture, some humidity. And you get these, these well, just toning marks. They're unsightly, but they're, the coin's not screwed up. But they're not changing at all because these have been here for so long that this is a result of a change in the copper. There's nothing to wash off. There's nothing to clean off. Hmm. Well, that one didn't do any good either. Can we do anything to this dime? I got some crud on this dime. Yeah, it's a 1994. Let me tilt this arm. I got a couple of spots. Call them carbon spots, whatever you want. Let's see what we can do there. Anything? Anything at all. A lot of these just came out of my uh, change bucket. The circulator coins. It's probably what you can expect to find. Is that a double die? No. No, no real change here. And nothing on the back really needs it. Uh, everything we did, everything we did here had no effect. Okay. We didn't get uh, we didn't get the fingerprint off the proof. We got the new one off at great cost. Okay. The only thing we were able to do effectively was get that new fingerprint and destroy the coin in doing so. Uh, the nickel, okay, we got some crap off using a toothpick. All right, application of uh, whatever that stuff is. I got to look it up. The acetone did nothing to the nickel. Did nothing. All right, I'm still getting more stuff off using the uh, toothpick. Acetone did nothing for that. It did nothing for the pennies. Is that the one we did with the uh, the eraser? Oh, here's the eraser coin up here, I think. Uh, okay, let's try this one. This is sitting here on my desk. It's just a 1987 with, you know, a lot of cruddy grime on it. Anything going to change? It's been handled a few times, fingerprinted a few times. I don't see anything changing. There's a bit of corrosion forming above the date. All right. Uh, that's, what, that's the one that had the spot on the back. Nobody knows what that is. And it still has that spot on the back. The freezer worked in taking stuff off. The toothpick worked in taking stuff off. Everything else did either did nothing or did damage. Hmm. Don't clean your coins. You're not helping them any. You're only deluding yourself into thinking this is going to be worth more or better looking. But for the time and effort it takes, uh, typically the, the project is a loss for you. You don't gain much. Now, if it's an old coin that's been underground, Spent some, spent some time underground. Uh, how would you clean that? Soap and water. All right. You don't have to use a you don't have to use a scrub pad. You could use a soft cloth with with soap and water. Uh, but dry that baby out. Now, once you've got water on a coin, then acetone has some chance because it will displace the water. Okay, you will displace water with the acetone and push it off to the side or let it get off the coin. That's about the best use that the acetone has. So clean your filthy, grungy, dug-up coin the way you like and treat it with acetone at the end. Uh, and you get a chance. But everything else, uh, nothing was effective here. Nothing was effective. We screwed stuff up with the uh, with a soft scrub. I'm not going to try the Comet. I don't even use that in my toilet. I got them blue things to drop in, right? The ketchup I'm going to save for my french fries. Oh, and there is Windex. 
Okay, there it is. Windex. I use this for cleaning my computer screen and for cleaning the stickum off of those slabs that if I haven't screwed them up. That's about the only thing that works. Let's get over there. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. There you go. Spray and spray and wipe. And the slabs are usually sealed up, so you can just go to town on those. Oop, that's a lot. Yeah. And that'll come off. Now make sure you use a nice soft cloth when you clean your slabs. There you go. Get it all dry. Well, the slab is clean where the sticker was on there, uh, but we didn't do anything about the destruction from the acetone, where it actually melted the plastic. But look at you paint the desk real good. You can get that black spot off some. Now, I've been playing with coins for many, many years. Uh, I learned long ago, don't even bother cleaning the coins. What's the gain? What's the advantage? For all the time, all the effort. I keep the acetone out in the garage to get stains out of wood. All right. You can do a thing for pennies. Don't forget the toothpaste. Oh, yes. Toothpaste. You got a complex compound again. What's in toothpaste? Um, I really don't have any idea. I'm sure there's volcanic ash in there. Oh, where is it? Where is it? I got a brush here. There we go. I get my teeth. This is how I clean my teeth. Yeah, a brush, some toothpaste. That was nasty. Uh, people use a brush to clean the pennies. That's actually probably the, one of the worst things. You got hard bristles and this. Where's that proof? Let's really screw it up, huh? USB scope. Let me get you off of there. What's that brush going to do to, a, to a, the surface of a coin? I'm going to drag it across once. That's not doing any favors for it, I tell you. Yeah, I'm picking up little lines. Avoid that. This poison control warning when you read the tube. No! What, you got kids that are like eating the whole tube of toothpaste? Acid fluoride causes the best brain damage. That's what did it for me, baby. We used to just huff it. We'd take the acetone and mix it with some toothpaste. You know, just swirl it around. Oh, we float away in the bliss. It was wonderful. Um, the cleaning of coins, if you must clean it, well, it's probably not really worth the time. It's probably a coin that's been underground. Uh, kind of screwed up. Now, I did see a fellow pick out a, I think it was an 1802 uh, bust penny. Right? He dug it up. He was out metal detecting. He found an 1802. Wonderful thing. Pretty wore out. Looked like a circle of dirt. Well, he took it home, put it under the water, put it in the, put some soap to it. And sure enough, it came out terribly corroded, worn out, big dig on the side. Uh, and, you know, still covered with a lot of a lot of crap, a lot of debris. But, he still, you know, he picked up 25 bucks for it. That's not too bad. There's not much more he could have done. Perhaps the freezer trick would work, but when you have the copper corrosion going on, it's pretty much a done coin. Would I go with that one? All right. You can preserve the detail. You have a you have an authentic coin, but you're never going to restore the surface. It is forever shot out. There she is, still in a wheelchair. 200 years she's been in a wheelchair. That's Britannia. Um, once uh, the heat gets to it, uh, in this case, the burned one, there is no cleaning that. It is, it is forever changed. It's the molecules, right? Uh, that carbon is embedded deep into the uh, the layers of, of copper. Here's another Bernie. It's done, baby. Uh, some things will come off. Fingerprints, your best chance is to get, get it immediately. On an, a circulated coin, you'll have a different reaction with that soft cotton cloth than you would on a proof. You can get away with a light touch if you want to remove a fingerprint. Uh, just a, the lightest touch. You do that to a proof and you're going to have marks on that forever. To, can to clean slabs use Meguiar's Plast X clear plastic cleaner. Also good for headlights. Yep, only $9.99. But wait, there's more. 
There you go. Get a mirror surface on that. But I got little marks on it now. That's a darn shame. Well, that only costs. I'll almost make enough off the video to pay for this coin. There you go. We still have that fingerprint up there and over here. No change. All that effort. And I have some idea of what works and what doesn't work. Uh, there's no getting this stuff clean. How about the old nickel? I got a 1936. This was in my junker pile. That's why. That's why it's in the junker pile. Okay, let's see what it does to the nickel. We're not going to screw this up. It's already screwed up. Oh, do -do -do -do. Are we getting any improvement for the attempt? Seeing anything change? Any dark spots lightening? Are we getting any crud out from that date? Let's flip the Q-tip over. Okay, there's maybe one little particle of God knows what. So I tell people when they say, what do I use to clean my coin? I say soap and water. Do I want them mixing bleach and ammonia? Do I want them getting out the xylene? You know, mixing that with uh, ammonia or Oh, M-E-K or something to, you know, to try to make it brighter. One, one whiff of some of that stuff and, and you're screwed up. It burns your lungs. Please don't give bad advice. Uh, mixing household chemicals can do a great deal of damage to someone. Uh, burn their lungs. Give them troubles for years. Uh, you mix bleach and ammonia, it can be deadly. Soap and water ain't deadly. I'm surprised no one mentioned peanut butter. You gotta get a good, good thickness of peanut butter. So it's more like a peanut butter ball. Uh, and let that sit in there for like four weeks. And then you put it in the freezer and it all pops right off. True story. No, we have not improved any of these coins. I, I hate to say it. Except the VDB we stuck in the freezer. Um, and then one said, well, Jesus. Yeah, that's the base of my platform. I think some of the acetone might have soaked through. Oh, geez. Uh, meanwhile, it cost me the acetone. That's that's like, uh, I think that was seven bucks for the quart when I've got it. I've had it for a few years. If you open it up and leave it open for just a little while, it's gonna it, it's gone. So it's kind of expensive if you make a mistake. Uh, I don't know what the price is nowadays for a quart. Q-tips, they're shot. All right, well, they're pretty cheap. You know, a couple bucks or a hundred. Mmm, cheaper than beer. Okay, a toothpick. Those are dirt cheap. A toothpick and a soft towel are my tools. Right? A Q-tip is another one of my tools. Q-tip can get some of the softer stuff off, but uh, it's too easy to screw up the surface. Mm. Meanwhile, acetone is going to screw up everything else around it. It's going to screw up your plastic. It's going to screw up your desk surface, right? Even if you have cardboard down, in this case, you know, a two-ply holiday Hallmark card, uh, even that will go through and, and can cause some damage. The potential for damage far exceeds the gain. Anything that, you know, would be valuable, I wouldn't even touch at all. Just, you know, take the grade on the chin. Any crud on there, take it on the chin. You're probably not going to get a, a better coin. Now, have I have I shown everything? Is there anything else I, I can explain for you? Don't bother cleaning coins. Uh, no gain. Takes up your time. Doesn't work. Most of the stuff is right there. Anything else? Leave it. Wellington halfpenny. This where's my Wellington? Yeah, I got that on. Uh, Tim Rathjen's site. You've seen it. You've seen his site. You know, he's got the he's got the book seat. I'm looking around there for some stuff, and usually you can find some deals. He's a coin and stamp place. Uh, he's got a lot of stuff. I mean, a lot of stuff, and he doesn't have the followers, right? So his stuff isn't getting bids. You can get on there and get some good stuff for good prices. This baby was ten bucks. I think okay, just send it. Yeah. I wanted a, I wanted a Wellington half penny token. Now Wellington was the uh, chief of the forces uh, in Canada during the War of 1812 and all that. 
he went later went on afterwards to uh, defeat. He's a guy who defeat, defeated Napoleon at Waterloo. Right? And then from there, Napoleon went to Elba until he died. Yeah, from the early, you know, 1812, 1814, he was, old fellow was in Canada. But he was a pretty important fella. Acetone is only for PVC. Well, you see what it does to, uh, to acrylic. That's gone. You take that out. There you go. That's what acetone would do to plastic. I'm going to flip around here and ruin with it. I don't know how it could go so far, but it's, there it is. There's a flip. All right, it used to look like this. It was a good flip. Now it looks like junk. What else we got for plastic around here? Oh, we got a plastic bag. Let me take that one out of here. What will acetone do to a plastic bag? Let's get over here and look. Home. This be, this might be neat or it might be nothing. Hard to say. And wait for it. Yeah, same thing. Kind of eats it. Acetone is a solvent and it's a medium strength. It smells wonderful. We'll try that. Yeah, that didn't do us any good. That's what I've been using. Just, you know, uh, an ounce of acetone went into the production of this video. And nothing good came of it. Acetone ruins plastic and doesn't really... It doesn't interact with coins, but as we see, it doesn't interact with the crap we want to get off the coins either. For all the effort, we'd ha we've had pretty, uh, pretty miserable results. I learned the hard way. No cleaning. Just don't even bother. Uh, brushes. Erasers. With that eraser. And I showed you the eraser trick on, on copper pennies. It kind of shines them up, but uh, pretty much screws them up in the process. What's this one? That's that 09. Let me grab another one. That's a 1944. You know, it kind of cleans them up, sort of. It makes them look like they're scrubbed with a pencil eraser. It's not a very solid pencil. They were much stronger erasers back in the 70s. There you go. See the bright spot appearing? Yeah, they get them girly erasers nowadays. No toning. Oh, God, don't clean. If you want to read about... Well, so much for showing the rest of that. It's gone. It hit the floor. Yeah, get into the uh, discussion on the coin out group about the tone coins. That's not going well for... For, for some people. Um, it's an alteration. It's the same as sometimes this cleaning can alter the surface of the coin. You saw that 1909, or excuse me, the 1910. Where'd it go? Let's try that under a different lighting. Let's put that light right on it. This coin was probably cleaned, I would say, 30 years ago. All right? But the, uh, the new toning is is atypical here you go we're starting to get it in here uh, the luster the original luster the cartwheel is gone so it's a dull coin let's flip that over this guy's been cleaned and it's iridescent which i don't think we're going to be able to pick up unless we get it just right but you see any cartwheel on that no, of course not. For the grade, you probably wouldn't see it anyway. But even in that grade, once it's been cleaned, well, now you got shiny copper, but it's not the same surface. It's been altered. I'm going to kill that light because it's blinding me. Oh, well. So this coin is a 10S. It's good for a few bucks, but that's it. Tony changes the molecular surface. That's right. Um... You're altering the surface. You're altering the color. You're putting a contaminant onto the coin. It's the same thing as cleaning. You're changing it. And now, that's not a genuine coin anymore. It's a changed coin. It's an altered coin. It's been, it's been adulterated. Uh, nothing's worked. Polishing. Let me get back here. Polishing. No, I got a scratched coin. I got fine hairlines on this guy. There you go, one above uh, Liberty there. Pretty good one. All right. And I still have the fingerprint. 
after repeated attempts. Right? It doesn't get it doesn't get gunk off. There, there's a gunky one. Nope, no good. Well, you can get some debris off, but in this case, it's stained and ain't coming off. We got some off the one nickel. All right, good. And I can probably get the rest of that. And I'm going to use a toothpick to get the rest of that. Oh, look at how easy that comes off with a toothpick. And back here. Look at that. In 10 seconds with a toothpick, we'll get everything off that coin. Two minutes with a... Uh, with acetone, nothing came off. There you go. That's coming right up. I think that is cat hair. I'm sure of it. Oh no, it's cat. It's cat vomit. <laughs> you know the ones? No kitty. No, go outside. Oh kitty. There you go. That did something where nothing with the, with the acetone didn't. Uh, no change here. That's. Too bad I was hoping to wipe away all those scratches. No, nope, we didn't improve that. We didn't hurt it any. It was already, you know, already clawed up. Poor fella's crying. Okay, we didn't touch this. Because I think that's beautiful just the way it is. Let's see. What was this one? Nothing happened here. Right? We still have these. Uh, this is toning. These are discolorations. From the natural environment affecting that coin. No change. None. What are you getting what do you get what are you trying to get out of cleaning coins? This one, no change. Carbon burned up. Uh, what do we do something with this one? I forget which one what was this one? Oh the crap in the back. No change. That one, well. That's changed, but long ago, and it will never, ever be the same again. All right. I think we've proven the point. Dish up can co turn coins of funky color, too. Yeah, you have residues that will, will stick around and linger long after you've rinsed and rinsed and rinsed. It's not just the residue of the soap, but the residue from the water you're rinsing it with. Unless you have distilled water. Uh, and anything uh, distilled, anything on the coin, if you're applying distilled water, can be... Uh, brought into solution in the water and simply redeposit itself. Water doesn't do a darn thing for you. The only thing it'll do is, well, screw up your coin, spread the mess, and promote corrosion. Uh, salt is a common ingredient in waters, uh, water treatment uh, systems. Lots of salt in there. Salt, metal, and water, you're begging for disaster. And Shelly says hi to recent people. Cherry just showed up. About time. Okay. There's nothing to be gained here. For all the trouble, all the effort, all the expense, I haven't been able to fix one or improve one. Can you? If you can clean a coin, you show me a video of that coin being clean. Look, I've got a book over here I want to give you guys. Where'd it go? There we go. I picked up a few of these. And we have the photo grade. We have the photo grade. Okay, it's by James Ruddy. Is that right? Yeah, that's him, James Ruddy. It's got pictures of every series, every grade. So all you got to do is compare your coin to the photo and decide, you know, help you decide what the grade is on that coin. And for getting started in grading, it's a it's a tremendous tool. Let me put it over here so we can see it. There we go. Nope, that didn't work. Um, yeah, change that photo. That's photo grade. This is the 18th edition, which I can't show because it's too big for the camera. 18th edition. It's a Whitma Publishing. And this is the kind of thing I like to give away in this class. Okay, I've got a coin in front of me. Yep, you haven't seen this today. This is that coin. What you have to do is be the first one to guess the date on that coin. And then I'm going to ask for your, uh, there it is. Tell me the date on that coin. And I'm going to send you this book. I hear the whole show also while doing things around the house. Yeah, people do that. Uh, Mantor was saying he, he just plays it all day. He just picks it up by osmosis. 
I found a seat of dime that was covered in three-year-old tape. Tape comes off pretty easily, and acetone does wonders on tape, uh, especially scotch tape. 30-year-old tape, but it, it, you'll find it comes off pretty easily. That is a wheat scent. That's a Lincoln wheat scent. 35 people watching. Yeah, we should get this pretty quick. 1878? What are you, are you even trying? No VDB on that one. It's out there. Good to know. Have several with tape. Yeah, tape's an easy one. Um, alcohol gets off tape, but alcohol tends to, uh, will remove all sorts of other things and redeposit them as a solvent. Boy, I hope somebody gets this right. My arm's getting tired of holding this thing up. 1057. Kind of. It's out there. Here's a clue. It was made in the 20th century. Oh, so close. So close, some of you. It won't be long. Somebody's going to type this by accident and guess. You can guess as many times as you want. This thing will shut you out eventually. I think you get uh, six or eight guesses. LOL. Lincoln Central Coins, 1950. Just got it. Just got it. Lincoln Central. That's a 1950. There you go. Well, we can't see a darn thing. Let me get into the other camera. USB, 1950. Oh, good. I'm so glad it was 1950. It was, and I'd have to go scroll back through. Lincoln, uh, do me a favor. Send me your address, because I'm sure it's buried in the paperwork here. Uh, but send me your address in my uh, my email up here, and I'm going to ship that baby right out to you. You'll like it. It's good. Uh, your grandkids could operate this book, and it would help them. Seriously, this is a great book for kids. There we go, there we go. So congratulations, James, or Lincoln, as, as he likes to be called. That was so cool. I saw 50, 50, you know, 49, 51, 49, 51, a four numbers in a row. Oh, oh no, try hard. Somebody's going to get it. That's okay. Lincoln got it. God love you. We'll get there. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to take the winning penny. I'm going to shove it in the book. Why not? But I'm only sending out uh, books right now. I was sending out, you know, a book and a scale and, uh, oh, what do you call it? The, the loops and uh, some flips and some coins. And, you know, the package just kept growing. I'm, I'm sending out 30, 40 dollar packages. I, I can't, I earn about a dollar on these shows on a good day. Sometimes it's like 74 cents. Modra, do you remember me? No, I'm sorry I don't. But I'd like to. So hang around, come back more often. I got shut out. Oh, that's all right. We're gonna have another. I got more of these books. I gotta I gotta get the price on it, so you know, would you would you rather have the eighteenth edition with the blue or the eighteenth ed edition with the with the white? Because really the, it's the same darn thing. There's eighteenth. And there's uh, there's 18th. Uh, explain this to me. Photo grade, James Ruddy. Photo grade, Whitman. Yeah, James Ruddy. Uh, explain that. One's just as good as the other. The kids will like it. Why not? 38 watching. Oh, hit the like button. Absolutely. Beth's, Beth has that book. Beth, I have a book for you. Uh, I've been... Where the hell would it go? No, it's still in the other room. We're uh, in the reading room. We're going and read for 10 minutes or so. Uh, I'm going to send that to you because you're ready for that book. And I'll, you know, show it to you before we get there. But I'm not going to get up and go in and get the book because I'm not wearing pants. It's all in the distributor. That's, that's probably it. Uh, they ran out of blue ink, I suppose, and said, oh, we'll just have to use white. Redesign it quick. we got plenty of yellow. We'll get that out. Guys, I want to thank you for hanging out, showing up. Uh, sorry I missed you yesterday. The food was good. Took in a uh, 
Oh, they had some country music, uh, kind of a jamboree going. Well, at least the food was good. Mm, got me a nice steak. A little, uh, little ribeye action going. It's good to get out of the house every now and then, because if I stay here much longer, look, I'm going to go nuts. But it was fun. Thanks, Chocolate. We hope to see you tomorrow. Now, tomorrow is the uh, the big show. You can start uh, sending donations anytime. Uh, explanation is down in the links below. I've got some neat stuff that I'd like to uh, to give away tomorrow. And somebody who's going to win it all. I'll take the gold. You want the gold one? i got to get that penny out. Where'd it go? Where'd the gold one go? Gold. You got it. It's actually white with gold and purple. But no matter. I think it's actually cleaner. Hey, let's see what acetone does to paper and ink. There we go. We'll get that right out to you. This uh this is a this is brand new. That's never been cracked. Yeah, that's a good book. It'll look good. You'll like it. Your kids will like it. Have a look. Play with it if you don't like it. Just give it away to somebody else. That's the whole idea. Try it with styrofoam. Do I even have styrofoam around here? I bet you I do. Um, where'd that packing foam go? I had some here. Well, it's no longer in reach. I just packed a coin and I had some foam. Hmm, I must have used all of it. Well, no matter. I'll just make a darn mess and relax. my housekeeper's out for the day. By to those exiting. 30 people here. We ought to just keep on talking. I gotta start putting this stuff away now. Okay, now the benefit of acetone is it does dry up pretty quickly. So once it evaporates you can put your coins away and the flips they came out of usb here's the the 1910s that's been cleaned i can put that in its original zip but it's been cleaned you can see the color differences here it's not a natural surface ain't that a darn shame would have been a you know would have been a five or ten dollar coin for that Maybe five. It's got a couple of scratches. Let's see. These are nothing. That's a wheat. That's a wheat. That's a wheat. That's a wheat. These get kept. That's a nine. That's a buffalo. Burned wheat. Good wheat. Junker. What was that nickel? Junker. 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 I got these out of my uh, change bucket, so I'm not worried about them. And that uh, now Junker proof. Lincoln, you're going to get a proof too. It's in the book. You won't like it, but the kids might. They might not. Your kids might. Your grandchildren might not notice a little, a little scar. Use sandpaper. Yeah, really. 20 grit's the best. It, it, gets, uh, it takes stuff off fast. Spring is here in the Midwest. I've been swimming while I deliver these people their food. Outstanding. We have gotten through the wind, and it's summer now. It's 84 degrees every day. Summers, are, uh, the nights are, you know, they're back to 68, 69 every night. And it'll keep on, you know, growing a degree a week until it's 93, 73 every single day. It rains at 430 for 20 minutes, cools it off by 20 degrees every day. That's how Florida works. But man, the mosquitoes love this weather. If you leave your window or your door open two minutes after dark, whoa, they come. And, dude, you're just itching all night. I like the torch and the chisel. Yep, blow the torch and the chisel. Best way to clean a coin. That don't get it. Ain't nothing will. Please don't clean coins, says Lincoln. You're darn right. Uh, I think I showed that it's pointless. Or I tried to show that it was futile. Hopefully I was uh, successful. Here's that other one. Oh, this was, here's another one that was cleaned. Uh, this was in the bag here. And I don't know if this was intentional. 
uh, this may be uh, something that was run through the laundry, to tell you the truth. Let's see if we can get over to the home photo here. There you go. Uh, it's dull. It's got, you know, the right color for, you know, a, a better coin, red-brown perhaps. But it's dull. It doesn't have the cartwheel luster. Now, phosphate detergents will do this to your coins. You know, put a few pennies. Put some brand new pennies in your laundry. Put them in your uh, the pockets of your jeans. Launder them a couple of times. And I bet you you get the same darn thing. Kind of off color and lackluster. That's what the uh, detergents do. And please don't eat the Tide Pods. Why do they do that? I think normal people, grown ups, should not be eating Tide Pods. Yeah, but that's a uh, that one's been cleaned. Yeah, that is a 1942D. Somebody might like to have that one. Why not? So get out there, try it yourself. Try, you know, get some ketchup. Grab your change, your change bucket. Where to go? No, your tissue roll jar. This is stuff I spent. I'm going to take this up to the store. I'm going to get, you know, razor blades and soap and shampoo and toilet paper and, you know, chicken and meat and cheese and mm, meat and cheese. That sounds good. You can try on these and pull out your ketchup and get a soft cotton cloth and, and see what it does for yourself. And you're going to find a lot of the stuff that's on the coin. You can't get it off. If you can... A toothpick probably got it off. And all the chemical cleaners in the world don't really do anything for you. What proof set do you lose? I had a 1963 uh, proof penny. Well, I got a whole bunch of them. And uh, that's what I rated to uh, for this experiment. And that coin was damaged. Oh, well. Sorry. We got to show something off. And proofs show it off well. My other option was... Uh, what do we got here? I got a Lincoln... Where'd you go? Scope? There it is. I got this guy. Um, went through a roll of them, and these are just spotted. Nothing great, but they've been searched. I could take that guy, and I could polish that for a while. Let's see what polishing does to a brilliant uncirculated. There we go. So I got some contact marks. And this one it will never be a, a great coin. It made a billion or two. So you just polish that with a soft cotton cloth and see what happens. And you're going to find it's really neat because uh, when you take a soft cloth to a brilliant uncirculated, you know, a, a business stripe, a lot of times after you do it for a few seconds, they're actually shinier, right? Because you're taking, you're, you're effectively deburring the coin. And they improve in a limited manner. And after that, you start polishing them and they go downhill real quick. It doesn't take long to destroy a coin just from the abrasion of a soft cotton cloth. You think about you think this about coins, but it's a Tide ad. Do they does Tide you know Doritos and Tide, your combination? I don't I don't have TV. The thing is nowadays, if you clean them, they'll be so clean they become invisible. Well, your the value becomes invisible. I can tell you that. I thought it may be in box. With the truck keys. Damn mint and their jet dry knockoff. Same cloth I have. These are handy, right? Uh, if you don't have gloves, these teeth cloths can come in pretty handy. I can take a coin, right? set it down over here. I can pick it up using that cloth, just like that. Got it in between my fingertips right now, right? So I'm not getting my finger fingerprints on that coin. I can turn it over, I can look at it, I can set it back down. And these, uh, were three, four bucks, and you get several, probably half a dozen. And it's a better, it's, it's as good an alternative as, a, as cotton gloves, if you can't get the cotton gloves. But if you keep at it, you're effectively abrading the coin, and you start to decline in value. After a very, it only takes 30 seconds of rubbing it. And you're starting to uh, to take off that finish. I said that about whoever cleaned that 10s he had, the 10s. Where'd he go? Ah, there it is. Somebody decided to clean that. Hey man, I'm going to make this coin good. Now well, it was already kind of screwed up. Now, I don't know if these uh, injuries on his head and in the back were there before or after the cleaning. 
but uh, well, the cleaning really, really didn't screw it up too much extra. There it is. It's a shame when you see something like that's been cleaned. I picked up a 1910, uh, looked beautiful in the photos. It was a 1910, and I'm looking at it thinking there is no damage, nowhere on this coin. And it's got this great uh, clash on the reverse. So I bid on it, and the one it came in, I opened it up, looked dull. Pretty, clean, and dull. Uh, it had been cleaned, I sent it back. I really, I didn't say that about you. No offense taken. You get these claws four for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. There you go. Now make sure you don't get to, make sure they're cotton, right? You don't want to get to Orlon, Rayon, Nylon, Polyester. Those fibers are stiff. You know, over the long distance they they hold up, but they have you know oftentimes a square uh, shape to the fibers and will frig up your coin. Whereas cotton is a natural fiber, it's much softer. And forgiven. Uh, polyester in particular and Orlon will screw up coins. Uh, don't use those. Don't even clean your glasses with a man. You polish plastic glasses with a polyester shirt, you're going to screw it up. Okay, anything yet? Okay, I'm starting to lose some shine here uh, on his cheek. Let's see if we can get a better shot of this. Geez, I think it looks pretty good. But don't polish your coins because, oh, where'd that go? I got this one coin that's polished. Let's see if I can find that. I'm never going to find that again, I can tell. Now, I'm never going to find that. Uh, there's a Walking Liberty half. They're just polished. I mean, you swear somebody took a like a buffer to it. It was so so shiny. <coughs> the membrane that disintegrates in Tide Pods is a, is a strong neurotoxin. It attracts the nervous system and can kill you with a short amount of time. Kill hundreds. Take it off the market. And take the Tide executives and send them to prison. No. Are you not responsible for your product? I got a three-legged buffalo that was Polish. Well, usually they're made in America. Uh, but I guess uh, Poland has some neat coins, so I don't know whether they have a buffalo on there. There's a hotel in New York that's clean, that cleans your chains. You're watching the dirty jobs. No, Mike! Mike, no! It's not Mike Rowe, it's Mike No. All right, let's see if we can change on this after a couple of minutes of scrub a dub polishing. I can't even hold it steady. Let's go in close. We should be able to start to see some effect of the polishing after a couple of minutes. And what do we got? I'm not seeing much. Well, it should be there. I'm going to say that my eyeball will pick up things as the scope won't. Maybe. I don't have before and after shots to show you. But you can see that if it does take that much work, um, you can probably get away with handling a coin with one of these for the short form, where you can pick it up, turn it over, right? Keep your fingerprints off the gloves or off the coin. And if it takes uh, that long to really uh, see the polishing marks, I think you'd be okay. No tear. The best way to prevent that, you know, with that uh, the proof going. Oh, it's in the coin. It's in the book. The fingerprint. The best way to get the uh, fingerprints off the coins is never to put them there to begin with. And that's where the soft cotton glove or cloth or latex comes in. Did you get my box can? I'd have to check the mail. I haven't checked the mail. Didn't check it yesterday. I know there's something out there, but by God, I'll check that. 
and I'll get back to you. Hey, turn it back around. I saw a D in the left corner. This? I saw a D in the left corner. It's round. There's no corners. You get your typical rinse spots on these. Loomis coins do not look clean. Front. Now the D in the left corner of the front. Now it's a spot. Focus on BDB when that's sharp. I can look at the D. There's your D. That's kind of a D. Yeah, I don't think it's a, a mint mark. I think it's a splotch that only kind of has a square side. Uh, no D here. Yeah, it looks like a D. Okay, I got a 2009 D with a misplaced D. Let's start the bidding at $100. Don't mind that. That's a piece of lint. There we go. Completely natural surface. Untoned. Blemish free. Double die. It's a 2009 over 9 with a misplaced D. How much? Do I have 500? We'll start at $500. There it is. I, I suck at auctions. Yeah, scratched up, goner. Nothing to see here, folks. That goes in my. Uh, that'll go back to the bank. Uh, some people say these because they, they say oh, it's low mintage. Well, relatively no, low mintage, you know. But still, they made two billion of the darn things. You know, each. I think one point nine on the presidentials. Uh, that's enough for every. Two, what, two out of seven people in the world. That's kind of high vintage. These will be around until they disintegrate. Zinc rod will take these out. Really, if you've got nice ones that aren't perforated, keep a couple of rolls. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, don't get too overboard. You know, any, not all of these are going to be worthwhile. That first one has some scratches on it. Eh, this one's got some spottiness to it. Get the nice ones. You know, the 2009s of proofs and satins were made with French brass. So they're 3.1 ounce, 3.11, and they're 95% copper. It's only the satins and the proof. These are these are business strike zincans. Yeah. These are just run of the mill. They go away. I'll send those back to the bank and get some more. And I'll probably get enough, you know, in the next box that I'll, I can replace all these. There's Cindy. Cindy, we were just talking. This is the, the afterglow of the class. I, I rave for about an hour. And we talk about coin, cleaning coins today. And then we just, you know, chat. I has VDB2 is called Very Dirty Bowl. Okay, bye. Bad kitty. Okay, folks, I got to run to the supermarket. I got to do a couple of things around the house and I got to check the mail because there's probably a good chance of something in the mail. I know something I ordered is coming and somebody's sending me things too. So I'm going to let you go. We lost our homepage. Have we got the book? We got this going out to uh, Lincoln Central. Give me your address. It makes it easy on me because I'm getting slow and lazy and old and grumpy. After all, we know not to clean coins. Yes. But I think I think the whole point of this show was to show the futility of it. Uh, does it really work? What's more effective? A soft cloth and a toothpick. The ketchup? i got to put that away. That's down here. It's all wet because of the condensation. Yep, we'll see you on tomorrow's show. I need to chat with you. Why did you block me from me, we? What's your name, number one coin roll hunter? Did I block you in the group or personally? And did you post on your personal page some sort of hate or rage or gripe or groan? Because that would do it. I'm leaving all the rage over at Facebook.
Okay. I'm going to let you guys go. I've got things to do, people to see. He blocked me on chat, too. I did? I don't believe I did on you. There are two people I blocked over on uh, on MeWe. And I've just blocked them on their personal page because, you know, I don't want to hear about uh, po politics. I don't want to hear about religion. I don't want to hear about, uh, you know, somebody being wrong in something that has nothing to do with coins. I'm just having coins on that on that whole site. Why not? It'll be fun. I get enough, you know, bitching and moaning over on Facebook. I can keep, if I want that, I can go to Facebook and get it. I was actually asking to buy something. Huh. I'll check, Layla. I, I don't believe I, I blocked you for any reason. You should be, uh, you should be smooth over there. I'll take a look. Sometimes the thing wants to do its own thing. I'm still learning MeWe. It's a short learning curve, but I'm pretty simple. Alrighty, folks. Let's call it good. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same channel. We're going to give away some coins. So help make that a big package tomorrow. You know, just everybody pitching a little, and we'll have the biggest package that they, they, they got. It'll be wonderful. All right. Stay groovy, everybody.